Hi golfers and welcome. I'm Coach Carolyn here with my friend Natty Golf. She's an incredible teacher. We're out here at Pelican in Bel Air, Florida, and I'm super excited to talk about the three most common things that me and her both see when we get our students out on the lesson tee. So let's jump into it. Natty, tell me what is like the one thing that you want to list as a first common mistake that you see on your mat day in and day out? Yeah, definitely slicing. I feel like so many amateur golfers struggle with slicing it and you're losing distance due to that. And everything's super inconsistent when we have that pattern in our golf swing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also very hard to judge how big the slice will be. So some days, if you have a good timing day, your slice will be at, on the right side of the fairway, but sometimes it'll be on the other fairway. And sometimes there is no other fairway. Totally. And it will not be on any fairway. Yeah. So that's something that we definitely see a lot. I see that all the time as well. And to Natty's point before, I think more people actually slice it than hook it. Um, and Natty stated to me that that's usually, the hook is usually a, a better player problem. Um, and I agree with that. And the hook tends to be a little bit longer in that case, just because it has more top spin. So let's talk about how the slice actually happens, why it happens and how we can help you fix it. Yeah. So a couple of the things that I think I tend to see would be number one, bad grip. I'm sure you see this oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. I feel like everybody could just do something so simple and probably strengthen your grip or at least make sure that you're gripping a little bit more in your fingers versus in the palm of your hand. Yeah. And that just is gonna fix an open club face at the top maybe, or at least help you square it better coming yeah. down. Um, and that's such an easy place to start. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but it won't take too many golf balls to feel a little bit more normal. Absolutely, yeah. Grip is something that I feel like, especially um, when you work with, with players that are so ob obsessed, I wanna say obsessed, but so, um, just into their golf swing. People always think it's their golf swing, their swing, totally. their backswing, their downswing, their impact, everything is just the big kind of motions that you associate with a golf swing and they just brush over the grip. But really it's the connecting point between you and the golf club. I mean, if you don't have a grip, you don't, ha you cannot hit the ball because yeah. you're not actually touching the golf club, right? So yeah. that should tell you how important that link between you and the grip actually is. Absolutely. So 100% Nettie, 100% agree. Um, also funny enough, the grip helps your wrists um, set better in the backswing yeah. because if you have a good grip and that means a little bit more in your fingers as Nadi said and not in your palm it just lets you set it better and then it lets you feel and control your face a little bit better so if you have a grip that's very much in your palm then you're just kind of strangling your club and you're not allowing your hands and your wrists to actually work with your body and follow your big muscles exactly yeah totally agree um, and set up in general, right? Yeah. It's all of these simple things that we, it's, it's so easy to forget about with all the information that's out there now um, and everyone being obsessed with fixing their swing, making yeah. it look a certain way. Um, do the simple things. Anybody can set up really well, have yeah. a great grip. Um, so making sure that your shoulders aren't wide open, that your stance isn't open, that there's not something funky going on with your pelvis that's set up. All of those things are really important if you're somebody who has big misses. Uh, to be more consistent. Yeah, likely you're going to have some some pretty big errors in your fundamentals, mm -hmm. in whether your grip, your setup, your alignment. I see that all the time. Mm -hmm. People is like, I can't, you know, I can't stop slicing it well, but they're setting up open. You know, their their pelvis, their shoulders, their body is all aiming left of the target, and that's actually how a lot of the pros hit a fade and they hit a shot that moves left to right. I don't want to say they hit a slice, obviously, but they they shape shots with their setup. So if you're setting up left of the target you're going to have a very hard time not shaping the ball left to right, whatever to whatever extent that is. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I totally agree. So I think also in terms of fixing a slice, as we said, good grip, good setup. And I think the backswing for me, golf is a lot of um, action and reaction. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens in the backswing will likely be counteracted in the downswing because if, if you think about it, you only have so much time to get to the golf ball. Um, in your backswing, you should be building up power, strength, and kind of positioning. So the downswing should be more a reaction. If, if there is a reaction in your part in the swing, it would be from the top of the backswing, in my mind, to the ball. Yes. Um, and if you're not in a good position, your body will have to use that time from the top of the backswing down to the ball to actually compensate. So if you are, I see it a lot where people are just kind of taking it away very armsy and whipping it inside. Totally, rolling the face open a lot. And Exactly, and then you're behind your body and what do you have to do to get back you got to come over the top, right? Because yeah. your body knows so much more than you do. That's that's so interesting. I totally right? agree with you. Like yeah. your brain. We like intuitively react to those things and where the club is, where the club face is. And even if you're not aware of it, your body's doing things to compensate for you because otherwise you're going to miss the ball. It's trying to help you. <laughs> it's it's trying to help you so yeah. And it's amazing what people's bodies will do to help yes. them hit the golf ball. Yes. 
And I just always think, you know, people, you never woke up one day and said, today I'm going to start hitting a slice. Right. <laughs> today I'm going to start slicing and today I'm going to start, you know, whipping it inside. You never decided that. Just like your body, you know, you never decided to come over the top, but your body just tried to help you out, tried to get you to the ball because your mind knows what the goal is. We don't have yeah. to discuss that, you know, hitting the ball is the goal because your brain is set on doing that. Yeah. Um, so it's trying to, it's trying to find a way. And as you said, bodies are amazing things, you know, the positions people can get into. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and other things I would think about too, that I see a lot are after you've fixed your grip and your setup, make sure that that club face is at least square at the top of your backswing, if not working on feeling it being more closed. That is gonna help a ton. Yeah. I think when you've got that open club face in the backswing, it just creates so many bad habits coming yeah. down, um, including poor contact slicing, yeah. hooking, I mean, anything can happen from there. Yeah. So I think that that's really important to yeah. work on that next. For sure. and and kind of going into the next piece that we're going to talk about, a open club face creates a weak shot. A lot of the time, it's, it's just very hard to get power into your swing from that position. If you look at the tour players, if you look at the best players in the world, and I would say, you know, 80% of the people on tour, men or women, they do not have an open club face at the top. If anything, they have a shut, more shut club face or neutral, obviously, but that's 80% of them will have shot to neutral and then maybe the other 20 or 10, depending on what it is, will have an open one because it's, yeah. it's very difficult to get into a powerful position. Um, and that leads us into, I think, the second thing that we feel like we see a lot is just people not having a lot of power, not having a lot of hit, not a no oomph behind the ball. They yeah. just feel like they're taking a huge swing, but they just can't get that power into their ball. Or maybe there's some you're somebody who uh, feels like you hit all your irons the same distance. I get that yeah. a lot too. Newer yeah. golfers or people who haven't been playing for as long maybe. Um, they're like, I feel like all my clubs go the same yeah. distance. And it's like, yeah, because you're swinging at you know 20 miles an hour, swinging so slow and yeah. we don't have any good coil as we were talking about earlier yeah. uh, in that backswing to create that power coming through the ball. Yeah, absolutely. And when you say coil, do you want to explain that to us a little bit so we can really have the viewer understand what that means? What are we supposed to be doing in the backswing? Yeah, so you definitely want to have a some separation between your upper and your lower. And that's really what creates that coil. Think of like winding something up, right? So if our upper body can turn nicely against our lower body, we can create a lot of snap coming back down. Yeah versus we were talking about a lot of the mistakes I see is everyone's turning everything together in both directions. And then the golf club can really only move as fast as you're turning. There's no whip, there's no speed happening yeah. there. So you need to have some of that separation happening. And um, I think to go with that, some people have injuries or limitations that don't yeah. allow them to do that as well. Um, but I still think most people could find a way yeah. around that if they do have that. Uh, to become a little more mobile and create some of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think there is a lot of people use that, and I don't want to say as an excuse. As you said, there is limitations, and not everybody's as flexible. I do realize that, but you can train that. You know, I mean, dancers didn't didn't 100%. weren't born to be able to do all this crazy stuff, right? They trained for it, and it takes a long time, and it takes consistency, as a lot of things, a lot of sports, and especially in golf. So I think there's definitely something to be said about doing your stretches and stretching specifically for that um, backswing and for that yes. separation. Um, and just being able to, to know that maybe today you won't be able to get in that position, but you will be able to get in that position, you know, tomorrow, day after and down yeah. the line. And if you do some of the things that are required to allow you to get into those positions, whatever that might be for you, whether it's strength and conditioning stuff or some mobility exercises, you're going to feel better yeah, 100%. when you play too. I mean, you're not going to be in pain, yep. especially if you have back problems, like all of that stuff can be solved with some, some training and conditioning just yeah. of your body, not even on the golf course. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point, if you were, until you are more flexible, or if you're, you know, at the maximum flexibility that you have with your shoulder turn, um, I think it's really important to look at the ratio to your point with separation that everything is turning back. So in an ideal, let's say textbook backswing. Um, we're talking 90 degree shoulder turn, 45 degree hip turn, and then the knees are half of the hip turn. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like halves itself, like as you are going down from your shoulders to your hips, exactly. to your knees. So if you can't achieve a 90 degree shoulder turn, if you just achieve an 80 degree shoulder turn, it's important for you to have half of that be the hip turn. So we keep those ratios the same. So even though you can't get to 90, you can still establish those ratios. Yes. Yeah. And that's going to help you immensely with speed and power and all those other things once we've got sort of our setup and our club face and all those things in place as well. Right, yeah. What's your favorite drill, Maddie, for building coil in Ooh. the backswing? <laughs> wait, wait, it's just, it's fine. It's just a, yeah, it was like a ladybug. It was a ladybug. It was, a ladybug. It was good luck. <laughs> Getting attacked on here. Such an elegant reaction too. You were like, ooh. Yeah, I would have probably like flown off my chair. <laughs> good. 
panic mode for oh my God, I was like, is it a bee? What's happening? Okay, lady bug aside, I was asking, what is your favorite drill for establishing that coil in the backswing? Something that, something that everybody can do. Yeah, I love just a band. I keep a simple, like lightweight exercise band in my bag. Um, and I like to do uh, some stretches where you put your hands kind of inside the band, pull it like this and really working on rotating as far as you can against your lower body. Both directions is really important. Obviously golf is a very one-sided sport and it's important to train both sides of your body. Yep. It's gonna help you both, you know, turning through the ball, but also just help you feel better as you're yep. playing. Um, I also love doing sort of the, the Jim McLean X Factor type of stuff, right? Where you can put something through the belt loops or for us ladies, I do have a training aid that kind of, oh, uh, Velcros around because we don't have belt loops on our right, skirts. Yeah. But, uh, put something there and something across the shoulders and just work on the ratios you're talking about, really yeah. making sure that we're getting enough chest turn versus our lower body. Um, but those are just some simple things yeah. you can do even at home, right? Not even at the golf course. In the hallway. Yeah, in the hallway. There we go. <laughs> that was teed up. And I, I, totally. We had to you're put welcome. that in there. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I love that. Awesome. Um, the third thing that we wanted to chat about is inconsistent contact and being able to hit your shots well in a more frequent fashion, more repeatable. And to us, the one thing that really, really, I mean, there's a lot of things that can impact contact. But if you have a lot of lateral movement and if you're you know, moving off the ball, swaying off the ball in your backswing, so away from the target and then swaying back because you're going to have to make up that distance that you swayed right. off because some people don't make it up and then they stay behind it and they just kind of turn and then you have that kind of hit the ground before. Chunk it, top right it. over top. Yeah, yeah I top mean, it. I mean, the sky's the limit at this yeah. point. Um, or the ground. <laughs> wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, that's one of those things that I always love to work with on my students as a very first thing because it's some, something most people do struggle with a little bit and a yeah. lot of people can improve on it. Yes. Least, you know, so there's obviously wide range, but if you don't have a stable center to turn around, it's very difficult to have that be consistent. And I always refer to it as like a pendulum. If you have a pendulum, it has a fixed point. And if you start it, you, everybody has seen those little like office thingies, right? Yeah. That kind of do the same thing. And yeah. they do the same thing because this does the same thing. This doesn't right. move. The fixed point doesn't move. If you start moving this, I mean, the pendulum and the weight on the bottom move is any which gonna, direction, any right? direction. There's no way for you to be consistent or have any pattern to it. And that's the yeah. same thing in the golf swing. And that fixed point is your core and your body where you're turning around. Yes, totally agree. Um, some of the things I think are very easy, especially for newer golfers. Um, I think that's something newer golfers tend to struggle with yeah. more, um, is that too much lateral movement of whatever part of their body that might be that they're feeling it in. Uh, but something as simple as hitting some balls with your feet together yeah. and just getting, making that. a nice big swing. You know, obviously some people, again, if you have a little bit of a mobility issue, maybe in your upper body, that could be a little challenging, yeah. but it's a nice way to pull everything to center. It's even a nice way to warm up when you first get to the golf course, just to find the center of the club face, find your balance for the day uh, and not be bobbing and weaving so much. Yeah. Um, Cause you'll fall over if you're, if you're moving laterally when, you, when you've got those feet nice and close together. Yeah. So that's a really easy one. For sure, absolutely. I also love to talk about your knees mm -hmm. because a lot of times the lateral movement also is helped or initiated by not enough leg structure. And when the knees kind of, you know, go towards the away from target, towards the backswing and kind of, I don't want to say give out, but almost flex they too much. They always look a little wobbly. They, right? they look a little wobbly, right? Yeah. And people are dancing a little bit yeah. too much. Um, I like to kind of tell my students to try to flex their quads when they're standing in their setup uh, and just keep that flex throughout your backswing because it kind of does two things. It keeps you more stable. It keeps you more centered. You will feel any sway that you're trying to do. And the other thing is it also keeps your pelvis a little bit more stable so you actually can get to that coil a little bit better because yeah. it gives you more resistance in right. the lower body. Because the other thing that comes with lateral movement, especially when you are moving off the ball laterally a lot, is there's a lack of rotation, obviously, yeah. right? So we move to the side and we usually don't get a very good turn when we do that. Yeah. Uh, people feel like they're turning, but they're not. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's really important definitely to make sure. Thank you so much, Natty. I think this was such an awesome session. I yeah, hope you guys you. enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and you'll be seeing more from us. And definitely go follow Natty Golf on Instagram. She also has a YouTube channel, so everything will be linked in the description below. And if you like this video, make sure you follow both of us, you subscribe to us, and we can't wait to see you again in the next session. Mm -hmm.